YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am doing a new romance book haul. I have been getting so many romances lately, and I think that's mainly because I've been so disillusioned with a lot of the fantasy I've been reading. I don't know what it is this year. There's so many new releases in fantasy that, like, haven't been the shit. You know what I mean? They've been like, alright, or dare I say bad. So <laughs> I just want to read fluffy romances, okay? Like that's what I want. That's what I need in my soul. So I've been picking up a lot of them. A lot of these are new releases. Some of them are older releases that are just new to me, but either way they are all new in some way or another. First things first, the publisher Entangled sent me a little package and I was thought that was really cool. They sent me The Truth About Cowboys by Lisa Renee Jones. And this one, I mean, the cover's great. I mean, it's got like this black and white kind of vibe. It seems classy in like a smutty way. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what this cowboy's about. Wait, wait. Okay, so the blurb is in first person, which is a little odd, but I'm going to read this anyways because I want to know what this is about. While I was off pitching in the big leagues, my family was back in the small town of Sweetwater, Texas, running the family ranch. Then tragedy hit and I discovered there were secrets that my family kept. Problems they hid. I went home, left behind the money, women, and fame. I took over the ranch and took care of my grandmother. I took over hiding the secrets. Then she came to town. <laughs> A smart mouth, clumsy, too smart and too pretty for her own good city girl hiding out to write a book. She's right here on my property in the cottage my grandmother rented to her without my permission and she sees too much. She knows too much. <laughs> now suddenly my world is spinning and she's shoving a baseball back into my hand while baking cookies with my grandmother. She's the devil and an angel all in one fiery little package. I decide I'll wait her out. She'll go back to the city. Only suddenly, I don't want her to leave, and everything I've settled for in my life isn't enough. I want to play ball, and I want her, but there's that secret that won't let go. But neither will she. <laughs> so I had to make it dramatic, because the cover's so dramatic, it needed, like, the drama. It's a cowboy with secrets, and he used to be a pro baseball player, and then this girl's there writing a book and baking cookies and just being, you know, rom-com heroine stereotype <laughs> so i don't know i mean the cover i mean they picked a great model let's just be real and i'm interested i don't know it's like i don't really read a lot of cowboy stuff i'm just trying to see if i could immediately find a smutty bit because i'm pretty good at that <laughs> i'm sorry i'm being a perv <laughs> anyway the publisher was so kind they sent me two copies which means giveaway time i'm going to be giving away one of these copies of The Truth About Cowboys by Lisa Renee Jones. It's got a sexy cover, so there's that. And it's also contemporary with like dark family secrets and sexy delights and cookies. Because I mean, I, I would like also a cookie. <laughs> Who doesn't? Go over to my Instagram, the details will be there and you can win a copy of this. In the bag they also gave me, um, this was supposed to be a baseball lollipop, but it is crushed. <laughs> it might have tasted good. I can't smell, it's in plastic, what am I doing? And also a squeezy ball, it's a squeezy baseball. I wanna give it to my dog, but like I feel like it's too small, like he'll choke on it. So I probably shouldn't give this to my dog, but I can give it to my cat, cause my cat likes to bat things around and he likes, his favorite thing to bat around is like crumpled up balls of paper. I don't know why, so this might be fun <laughs> for him. So this might go to my cat. And then this will just go in the trash, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I'm so crushed. The first book I picked up recently is, of course, The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. I needed this. Like, you don't even know. Like, I pre-ordered this probably six months ago. Like, why would I not pre-order it? It's Tessa Dare. <laughs> like, that's kind of my thing. This is a continuation of the Girl Meets Duke series. It's also my favorite series by Tessa Dare so far. It is, like, knocking it out of the park. They're so funny and so smutty and just so delightful. And I love it. And I've been wanting this one so bad. This one is about Penny. Penny is like the resident weirdo vegetarian animal rescuer. And as a vegetarian myself, like, I feel very like seen and insulted sometimes. <laughs> She's like, oh, it's a sham sandwich. And they're like, a sham sandwich? She's like, yeah, it's fake ham. And I'm like, that probably would be something I would eat and enjoy. And then everyone else eats it. And they're like, blah, that is actual garbage. <laughs> 
Penny, she is, you know, a kind of getting to spinster age. She has all these animals she rescues. She rescues all kinds of different animals. I believe in this one she does get a parrot that was rescued from a brothel. So the parrot has lots of interesting things to say. Then she meets Gabriel, who is her new neighbor. He is remodeling the house next door. I think he's like house flipping. So basically these are historical romance, Regency era, but they're also, you could pluck the whole story and the characters and put them in modern day and it would also work as a rom-com. You know what I mean? Like the situations and stuff also work as modern rom-com. So I think that's why I connect so hard to it. But yeah, he's like a house flipper. He is like amassed all this money by flipping houses. So he's like, oh, I'm gonna fix up this house and it's gonna sell a lot of money. Except this crazy lady next door has a goat she keeps letting out. So, <laughs> little bit of animosity, but of course also attraction. And then I, I bet they do it in a lot of interesting ways. So I'm so excited to read this. I will admit, I got it and then immediately started reading it. Like I, I, I ordered it, I pre-ordered it, it showed up in the mail and I got it, I opened the package and immediately started. So I am on chapter six. <laughs> I read 62 pages. Like I, I invested like an hour and I just went to town on it. <laughs> so I couldn't wait, I couldn't. I love it so much already. It's so adorable, I love it. Another new release I picked up is Brazen and the Beast by Sarah McLean. This is a continuation of the Bare Knuckle Bastard series. The previous book to this one, Wicked and the Wallflower, came out last year. That was actually the very first historical romance I ever read was Wicked and the Wallflower. This is its sequel. And you know what? I liked Wicked and the Wallflower enough that I want to see what else is going on in this world. I don't think these characters are necessarily related. At least I don't think the females are. The males might be friends. I, I can't remember exactly. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, I looked at the blurb. So it's about Henrietta, who is a, a, a spunky woman. She's like, you know what, I'm 29. I'm gonna be a spinster almost. This is my year. I'm going to be that bitch. So she's like, I'm doing everything I want, la la. And she's also kind of a curvier woman. She's supposed to be I, I suppose plus size, you could say. So that's an, also an interesting heroine. And then you have a guy known as Beast, um, I forget his real name, but he was mentioned in Wicked and the Wallflower. So he and the, the hero from that are like, they own the same gambling hall. And, um, and she's just like, I'm living my life. And then he's just like, he wakes up in her bed and he's just like, where am I? And she's like, hello. <laughs> and I just, I just want to see them like get together. I'm very interested by this heroine because she feels so spunky. And also she's plus size, so like I'm very fascinated by her. And let's see the smutty tab. Ooh, look at the smutty tab. So yeah, she's getting it. She's getting what she wants. And I'm like, yes, you get it, Hattie. You get it. <laughs> so I'm excited for this one. I feel like I'm just gonna be cheering her on the whole time. Another Sarah McLean one I picked up is One Good Earl Deserves a Lover. This is part of the second rule of Scoundrel series. And I'll admit, the first book of this series I fucking hated, but I didn't know they were part of the same series when I picked this up. <laughs> Whoa, you know what? The smutty tab is pretty okay. It's not the smuttiest tab I've seen, but there's little glasses on it. So that's, it seems interesting. This one has a similar premise to that other book I read. What was it called? It says it in here. A Rogue by Any Other Name, where I thought like the woman was going to have much more agency than she ended up having, because I actually really hated that book so much. But this one, I feel like... Maybe they're gonna get it right. I don't know, I've been hurt before, but I'm hoping for the best. This is about Philippa and Cross. Philippa is also kind of similar to Hattie I just talked about, where she's just like, you know what, I'm bookish and weird. I'm gonna marry this guy who's kind of boring and I'm gonna hang out with my dogs. That's gonna be my life, but I got two weeks till that happen. So, hey, Cross, why don't you come bang the bejesus out of me? <laughs> and Cross is like, oh. Maybe. <laughs> so um, I'm pretty sure they do that. And I, I'm sure they're going to end up together somehow, but she's kind of bookish into the science and he is, you know, uh, a, a scoundrel. But I'm hoping with a heart of gold because the other scoundrel did not have a heart of gold. He had a heart made of assholes and I hated him. So I'm hoping for the best here. This might get it right because that other book I hated. So now I'm very worried about it. But I did pick this up used. I got it for like a dollar. No, less than a dollar. No, maybe a dollar? Whatever. It was around a dollar I got it for. So I didn't invest a lot of money here, but now I'm worried. But I'm also excited. I don't know how to feel. I have a lot of feelings and I don't know how to express them. <laughs> I feel like I'm a hero of a romance novel. I have so many feelings and I don't know how to express them. <laughs> mm.
Another new release is The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. I have heard such awesome things about this. Also, also guys, this is historical, but it's also an FF romance. And I was so excited because I haven't seen one of those before. Like there are some books that I wish the character was a lesbian or they were a lesbian, but they never got to explore that romance. So I was like, <gasps> give me all of this. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> this is about Lucy and Catherine. Lucy is kind of down on her luck a little bit. She just saw her former lover get married to a dude. So she's like, well, fuck me, I guess. I'll just sit over here and wallow. And then she finds out about this job opportunity to translate a French text that is about like celestial mechanics. And she's like, I fucking love science. Yes. <laughs> The woman who is offering the job is Catherine. She is a widow, I'm assuming, of the guy who wrote this book. And she's like, someone needs to translate it so I can get the fuck rid of it, earn some money, and then just go about my life because he's dead now and I don't have to deal with him anymore. So I think it's one of those relationships. And then so she meets Lucy and she's like, all right, fine, you can do it. You seem really into this. And uh, they start like kind of living together, working on it together, and then leads to more. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I want to read an FF historical because I haven't read one before. And this one sounds really cool because it also has like a science theme, celestial body. So they're going to look at a lot of stars. It's like, it's just written to be romantic. It's like, oh, moonlight. <laughs> I'm so into it. So I'm very excited to read this one. I also picked up The Wedding Party by Jasmine Guillory. This is another sequel to The Wedding Date. And I read The Wedding Date and frankly, I'm just going to be real. I thought it was a little overhyped. Like, it was all right, but it wasn't the best thing I had ever read. And then when the proposal came out, the actual sequel to that, everyone hated it. <laughs> I'm like, I haven't met anybody who liked it. Like, literally zero people who have liked it. So I'm like, oh, I, maybe I was right about the hype not being there. And then Wedding Party just came out, and everyone I've talked to who has read this book absolutely loves it. Says it's a great book. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give it another chance. Like, let's go back to this Jasmine Guillory, the guy I'm interested. <laughs> this is going back to Alexa, who is the heroine of The Wedding Date, and this is her wedding. Her two best friends are Maddie and Theo, who do not get along whatsoever, except for the fact that they can't stop doing it with each other. So, you know, choices. So Maddie and Theo are now part of this wedding together, and they know that they did it once, and they can't stop thinking about it, because it was apparently really good, I guess. And then, you know, they keep getting forced proximity situations, and I assume lots of sexy results due to that. And I've heard that it's such a farce because it's like them trying to pretend they were just caught doing it a lot, and I'm like, yes, I want to read that. <laughs> so it has a lot of like rom-com zaniness in it, and also like smutty bits, and I don't know. I, I want to give it another shot, you know, because I did like the wedding date. It wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't bad. And also this has glitter on it. So, I mean, glitter can cover a lot of sins. I finally picked up Intercepted by Alexa Martin. I've heard wonderful things about this series in general, and I've always wanted to read it. And then finally, like, Barnes & Noble sent me a coupon. So I was just like, well, I mean, if they got a coupon, I'm gonna buy this. <laughs> so it was a coupon buy, but I was like, all right, now's the time I'm doing it about Marley and Gavin. This is a sports romance. Marley was, um, uh, her ex-boyfriend was this football star who banged everybody in town and she found out about it. So she's like, well, fuck you, bye. And then she meets Gavin, who is yet again, another football player. So she's like, ugh, like, I guess I have a type. <laughs> and I don't really know how their relationship goes. I think the drama is going to be like, I don't trust athletes. They can't keep it in their pants. And he's going to be like, look at my pants. It's in it. Like I'm keeping it there. So <laughs> that might be the drama. I'm not sure. But I've heard such wonderful things about it. And I haven't read a sport romance in like quite a while at this point. So I kind of want to read another one. Let's just do it. I am so excited for The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. I went to the signing for this. Alicia came to town. Well, she lives out here now, but whatever. I went to the signing and I was really excited to meet her again. And this one in particular is more of a rom-com than her other series. And I only found out at the signing 
This is a spin-off series to the Forbidden Hearts trilogy. I didn't put it together until she said that Rhiannon in this book is the same Rhiannon we were introduced to in book three of the Forbidden Hearts trilogy. And I was like, oh, what? And my face did that in the audience. I was like, oh. and she's like, you didn't know, did you? And I was like, I didn't know. So I did that face in public. That was my life. I'm still excited about it though. Anyway, this is about Rhiannon and Samson. Rhiannon is a app developer. She created a dating app and she got ghosted by this guy, Samson, a while ago. Lo and behold, nowadays, Samson is the spokesmodel for a rival app. So they definitely have more of a rivals relationship, possibly even enemies. And I mean, by the end of it, they're definitely gonna get together. And I want to see how Alicia Rye handles a rom-com because the other books I've read by her have all been dramas. So I want to see her do comedy because she's actually like very bubbly and funny when you like see her talk in person. So I want to see how she does a rom-com. Also, it's going to be like dating apps and I know there's going to be like dating mishaps all over this and those are usually really funny. So I'm definitely really excited. And also I really liked Rhiannon. I didn't know it was the same Rhiannon. So now I'm like super excited. So definitely going to pick this one up. I also picked up Promise Me by Robin Bielman and Samantha Beck. And I saw them at a signing I went to for Tessa Bailey, who wrote Fixer Up. They were the other authors there, so I was like, all right, you guys were fun. Like, I'll pick up your book and check it out. And it seems interesting. I don't know, I really like the authors. I thought they were really funny, so I'm like, I trust your sense of humor, so I want to see how you handle this rom-com. But it's contemporary, it takes place in the Hollywood Hills, and I kind of really love books that take place in Los Angeles. I just do, because I live here. This is about Kendall and Vaughn. Kendall is house-sitting in the Hollywood Hills, and Vaughn is her neighbor, and he's like, sexy model who's trying to get like this job hosting a reality show, I think. And I don't know, it's just Hollywood contemporary smutty rom-com. I don't really know much more than that. I probably should because I did see them, but I don't know. I, that's all I needed to know, frankly, to get the book. So I'm excited about it. And yeah, it's a Hollywood rom-com. Totally in. Speaking of Tessa Bailey, I picked up two more books of hers because they just happened to have them at the signing and I wanted to get all the Tessa Bailey books I could find. First up, I picked up Disorderly Conduct by Tessa Bailey. And I mean, the cover is so cheesy. <laughs> this is why I probably hadn't picked up Tessa Bailey books before Fix Her Up, because that cover is a massive improvement than this one. <laughs> this one is about a kind of casual hookup relationship. And it's between Charlie and Ever. And Ever's just like, you know, I'm good. We're bye. Bye. I don't want to do this anymore. And Charlie's like, what? So he's like commitment phobic and all of a sudden the girl he's with leaves him and he's just like, wait a minute, I don't know how to feel about this. And then what ensues is zany rom-com bad dates and they keep running into each other constantly. So it's kind of like a second chance romance and also like sexy caps, I guess. I don't really know. I, I've, I've just got it because Tessa Bailey wrote it and now that I've read Tessa Bailey, like I want to read all of the Tessa Bailey books. I also grabbed Getaway Girl by Tessa Bailey. This is about Addison and Elijah in Charleston. So it's like kind of a southern small-ish town romance. But um, Elijah's wedding gets uh, messed up because a bride doesn't show up and that leaves um, Addison to be his getaway driver. Meet cute? I don't know. <laughs> they end up actually becoming sort of best friends. So it's kind of a friends to lovers situation. But I'm just so interested in like, how they met. He gets jilted at the altar and then the girl who picks him up, I think it's actually cousins to the girl who jilted him. She's like, let's go, let's do this. I'm gonna drive crazy. And then like, love. <laughs> I'm like fascinated by it. I think a big, the big drama of this is that Elijah is running for like mayor or something. And Addison is like a wild child getaway driver. So he's like, oh, maybe this looks bad. But then, you know, he has to decide, like, do I love her enough to like not care about the polls or like, or is he still gonna win the polls? Like, you know, that kind of whole thing we've seen before, but I'm still into it. <laughs> the last book I picked up recently is A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone. This is like a very dark, romance it has secret societies in it i believe i mean it says thorns on the cover so whips and chains and stuff i think it's gonna be a little s and emmy and also there's six characters 
and it seems like they're always part of this story so I don't know if it's gonna be like a six-way at one point but I've never seen a six-way before so I'm interested in that kind of in like almost a morbid way like I don't really want to see a six -um, but like I'm interested to see how that works so <laughs> it's more like Legos like where do you how do they fit together <laughs> it is secret societies it is smutty it is romance it is kind of a dark sexy book and I think the secret societies element is the thing that's really catching my eye about it and also like dark secrets and stuff so I'm like fascinated by it I might be reading this in the near future all right, that's a whole bunch of smutty delights I just picked up. So many smutty delights. I'm very excited about it. Fantasy has just been letting me down lately, and all I want to do is read smutty rom-coms because they're always good. You know what I mean? Like, they're very rarely so bad I can't stand them because I know exactly what I'm getting when I go in. Rom-coms are very formulaic, so you always know what you're going to get, and, like, there's something soothing about that, so... Anyway, let me know in a comment down below. Have you read any of these books? Which ones are your favorites, your least favorites? You know, the usual questions I always ask. Also, are you just in the mood for smutty rom-coms too? Like, I'm feeling really burnt out on the fantasy scene right now. I just want smutty rom-coms. Or just smut in general. Let me know down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!